Hello and welcome to this video. You want to become an embedded software engineer or you are already a software engineer and want to work for a company like Tesla, BMW, Airbus, Boeing, SpaceX, Apple or many more that use embedded systems? Then this video is for you. I will explain what embedded systems are and what you need to learn to be able to work with embedded systems. But before we dive into the topic, let me introduce myself. My name is Florian. I am a computer science professor based in Germany. I've been working with embedded systems most of my career, both within academia, but also before when I was managing a software engineering team with more than 100 software engineers that build embedded systems for automotive applications. And my mission is to help you grow as a software engineer. So if you're interested in software engineering and interested in growing your career, then please subscribe to this channel. And if you find this video helpful, then please hit the like button. Okay, so now let's get back to embedded systems and what embedded systems are. Chances are you are already surrounded by embedded systems while watching this. Because embedded systems are nowadays in a lot of everyday things. An embedded system is a computer system that is embedded into a mechanical or electronic system and is dedicated to a specific function. This could be, for instance, the microcontroller that is in your coffee machine or it's the microcontroller that is in your U light bulbs and is able to change the RGB color. Or it's the control unit in your car that is protecting your life when you have a crash and is deploying the airbags. Or it's a flight controller in a aircraft. Or similar things, it can even be an AirTag that is uh, providing your position information or also in your airports there is an embedded system. So what are the steps that you should take when you want to learn embedded systems and when you want to be an embedded software engineer? The steps that I'm outlining here are not just you know, a roadmap that I've invented, but it's also the general theme that we use in our embedded systems program at the university. So let's start with step number one. Step number one is to learn the programming language C. There still is a lot of C used in embedded systems, even though there are alternatives out there like C++ and others. But C is really the basic language that you can use. It's providing a lot of the foundations that you will later on need, even if you use a different language like C++. And it gives you a lot of control over the microcontroller, over your embedded system, and it's very close to the actual hardware. The good news is you can even start learning C with your desktop computer, with your Mac, with your Linux system, with your Windows environment. You don't have to start with an embedded system. I would even encourage you to not start on an embedded system, start on your PC, start in your desktop environment, because then you can focus on learning one thing at a time, which is much easier than learning C and embedded systems at the same time. Okay, so step number one, learn to code in C. Step number two, learn the basics of electronics. When you deal with embedded systems, you are very close to hardware. So it's definitely a benefit to understand what a resistor is, to understand how an analog to digital converter works, what the limits are, what things you need to add to your microcontroller for a given project. So you need to have a basic understanding of the electronics to really work in the embedded systems field. And then once you have learned that, the next step would be start with an Arduino. The Arduino system has two advantages that help you as a beginner in the embedded systems field to get started. The first one is it provides a lot of abstraction to the hardware functionality. So there are already a lot of libraries, a lot of things that come with an Arduino system that make it easier for you 
to work with the hardware that makes some of the things that are hard to do in C, in plain C, on a microcontroller a little bit easier and that's helpful especially when you are a beginner. The second thing is there is a very large Arduino community. And the community helps you in two ways. The first one is you will always find project ideas. You will always find showcases of projects. And you usually will also find the kits that you need that provide all the different electronic parts for this project. And the second thing is there is a very large community. And that's of course helpful whenever you have a problem because chances are you're not the first one that has this problem and the questions have already been asked and answered on Stack Overflow or similar websites. So that's a big plus if you start with something that has a large community. Number four would then be taking this to the next step. Once you feel confident with the Arduino, once you feel comfortable with the Arduino, take the step to a more bare bone microcontroller. For instance, you can use the ST Nucleo boards that provide you a more microcontroller like feeling, which means you have more control over the microcontroller. You have less libraries that are already there and are sort of restricting the access that you have to the microcontroller. You get a full fledged JTAG debugger port and things like that. So you have more control, but of course, on the other hand, also more code that you have to write to get the board running to get your projects running. And then the fifth step is never stop learning, right? You might have built several projects with Arduino already. You maybe have built your first or second project with the ST Nucleo board or similar boards. And then really it is about going from project to project, increasing the complexity, increasing the difficulty of the projects and to learn, 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 learn and master the art of embedded software engineering. So you will see there are a lot of great things that you can build with embedded systems. There are a lot of very exciting projects, whether that's home automation, whether that's building a self-driving car, whether that's robotics. There are a lot of very nice things that you can build with embedded systems. And it's really something that's worthwhile learning and very, very interesting and a lot of fun. So for all the five steps, I will create a list of resources that I can recommend for those specific steps. You will find the link to this list in the description of this video. I will also update this list from time to time if something changes. And I'm sure you will have a lot of fun exploring embedded systems, building your first embedded systems project. Let me know how that went for you in the comments below. I'm curious what your first project is, what you're building and um, what your experiences are. So please let me know if you found this video helpful. If you have liked this video, then please smash the like button that helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you are interested in software engineering, in embedded systems, if you want to take your career to the next step or just want to hear more about software engineering, then please subscribe to my channel so that I can see you in the next video. Thank you.